Welcome, welcome. We are live once again. How is everyone doing? Let's just make sure everything's looking good. All right, I think we're ready to roll. How's everybody doing today? Can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Great to be back for another live stream. I hope you guys are uh, having a great week so far. It's great to see everybody here in the chat. It's been a rainy, rainy day today. So it's been one of those days you just kind of wish you could just stay in bed all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, where are you guys at? Where are you from? Um, you know, how's the weather there? What you been up to? Let me know in the chat and uh, we'll, we'll get rolling here soon in just a minute. We'll let some people kind of fall into the stream. Hopefully everything goes well. My, I feel like my internet service provider has been uh, a bit flaky in the past week. So hopefully the stream goes well and we don't have any major issues um, today, but you know, one of those things, what can you do? Um, got a few things to talk about in terms of smart home stuff. We will be discussing a few things that were in the news the past week or so. And of course, this will be a great time for you guys to ask questions. If you have anything, you know, you want to ask me in terms of smart home products and stuff like that. Um, and uh, maybe some of the stuff that I've been testing and using, maybe you've seen some other videos. Uh, we will be talking about smart home stuff as usual, but feel free to ask me anything <laughs> uh, within reason, I guess. But no, happy to answer questions. We'll do that. You know, the last half of the stream, we always answer questions and stuff like that. So we will get to that here in just a few minutes, but let's say hi to some folks real quick. Smart home solo here in the house uh, says, Shane, I love those lines. I think they are Gobi. They look so cool. Thank you, Smart Home Solo. You mean, uh, which way? <laughs> the lines back here, these are Nanoleaf, actually. Uh, Nanoleaf lines back there. Um, and I got the little black skins that you can put over top of them. Um, so yeah, really love those. And I've got actually got some over here too, just outside of the frame with some of the shapes and things as well over there. Uh, let's see, rainy in Florida, Mr. Uh, Saar, MR Saar says rainy in Florida too. Yeah, okay, not too far from me, a couple states away, I suppose. Yeah, I've been rainy all day today. Had some nice weather earlier this week. Got to do a little bit of work on my backyard project, so it was nice to get back out there and start doing some of that stuff, trying to get back into it. You know, we had the uh, the car accident, some of you guys may know about a little while ago, that slowed down that project quite a bit, was hoping to do, uh, was hoping to be farther along than I am now, but we're hopefully in the final stretch of that and we're gonna get, uh, get that stuff all set up, hopefully for spring here soon. Eric W from the Netherlands in the house, what's going on, Eric? Uh, Jack's Diner is here. Uh, Rhett from Jack's Diner. What's going on, Rhett? Thank you for hanging out today. We got Vinny Z in the house. Terry Robinson, Sunny in California. Very nice. Portland, Oregon here. Uh, sunny and cold. Well, at least it's uh, sunny there. Cold. Uh, yeah, it's the opposite here. It's kind of gloomy, rainy, but warm. <laughs> so. Uh, wish I could get rain in Texas. John K. Wolf in Texas. Let's see. Oh, Caroline's here in the house. What's going on, Caroline? Where are you at? What you up to the uh, right now? I don't. She wasn't in the house as as far as like ten minutes ago. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. That is my wife. For those that don't know, Caroline. Jeff from Michigan. What's going on, Jeff? How you doing today, man? We got Lone Star Trent is in the house, and let's see. Brian uh, is here as well. Brian, what's going on? Brian and Frederick helping out with the chat. Thank you guys so much. The moderators helping out with the chat. Uh, Dan Zimmerly also, what's going on? Hump day, says Dan, let's go. Yes, sir, and Anna's Tech from UK. Hope everybody's doing well. So anything new? Anything you guys wanna talk about? You see anything good in the news? We did, we'll get through a couple of things that I saw and feel free to drop some comments and I'll try my best to bounce back and forth with the comments. Uh, but, uh, oh, I didn't test this out, but yeah, okay. All right, good, my screen share is working. Uh, so Eve uh, dropped this recently. So this is the Eve Energy Outdoor smart outlet basically um and you know they just released and i should have got the box for my indoor one i just did a review not too long ago about two weeks ago on the new eve energy outlet just the indoor us product this right here is a thread this will support matter over thread and uh, we'll start shipping um 
let's see, in May, only to select European countries though. So this here is not going to be available in the US. I don't know if they're going to release something like this to the US. I would be surprised if they did. This, this is like, this replaces the whole outlet. So this isn't like one of the ones you typically see, like the outdoor smart plugs that have kind of like the little dongle hanging off. This actually replaces the whole outlet. So I'd be kind of surprised to see something like this come to the US but it is IP44 water resistant. So for those of you who are in the EU and maybe surrounding areas, this could be coming, excuse me, in your area. And again, supports matter over thread. It'll be available for 79.95 uh, euros. So about 80 euros, again, in select European countries. So let's see. Uh, Frederick says, is Caroline keeping Shane in line? <laughs> well, she's, she tries. She, she gives it her best. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. Brolante says, figuring out how to put smart home tech in my new greenhouse. Finally finished setting up. Very cool. Yeah, I bet you can come up with some neat automations for something like that, I bet. Um, Speaking of outdoor smart outlets and stuff like that, I don't know if you guys saw this recently, but I was pretty excited to see this. Uh, let me get back to their homepage. Let's see. Uh, so LifeX, who kind of like died off for a while, was recently bought out, or I, I haven't really been following this too closely, but I think they were bought out um, by Feet, I, I think I'm saying that right. Feet, the electric company, uh, make a lot of you know different bulbs and stuff like that. But yeah, so they're they're back under new management and everything, and they have just released some outdoor a whole outdoor lineup, which is really nice. Let me move this cord. Uh, it's in my way. Okay. So uh, th this is pretty exciting to see. Uh, first of all, just smart outdoor products that will support Apple Home is always welcome because there's not a whole lot out, especially in the whole outdoor lighting space for Apple HomeKit users. So I'm excited to see this. Um, and you know, on top of that, these all support Matter, except for it looks like this one right here. Um, but these will support Matter, which of course means they will support HomeKit. Now, I need to go and pick me up some of these maybe because they, well, I'm just curious to try them out. So they support Matter over Wi-Fi. And my experience in Matter over Wi-Fi has been, Kind of hit or miss, depending on the products. Um, I Typically, the Thread products work better for me as far as matter goes. So I'm, um, I'm kind of interested in these, and especially like I, since I've been working on that whole outdoor space, I'm, you know, I'm thinking maybe I can find somewhere to put some of these outdoor products. There's just, again, there's really not a lot of outdoor products, like, like you know, something like this. Of course, you have Philips Hue, but you know, that's kind of it in terms of Apple Home support for outdoor lights. So I'm excited to see these hit the market. I really like the look of uh, really both of these pathway lights. These are pretty nice looking. I'm not sure, I might have to see if I can find somewhere in my uh, backyard area to put something like this. I don't know. I don't know if I'll have somewhere or not, but um, pretty nice looking products. I hope they work well. Low voltage. So again, it kind of reminded me of some of the Philips Hue stuff uh, that's available, except these all connect over Wi-Fi. So, you know, matter over Wi-Fi too at that. So we will see. Uh, yes, Frederick, thank you. Um, they will be, or they actually, they already are available at Home Depot. Um, so you can see like right here, $79, uh, $80 for, this is for the Spotlight. And you can see HomeKit right there. And of course it supports HomeKit through Matter. Um, but yeah, Wi-Fi devices. So you will have to have good Wi-Fi, good Wi-Fi coverage in your backyard uh, for that. And yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll go get some. Y'all let me know if that's something you wanna see uh, here on the channel. Maybe I can cover it. Maybe I can get some out there on the backyard project. I don't know if I'll have enough time for that, but I do have some, some spots in mind that would probably be good for some lighting, some, some new lighting. We'll see. Good Wi-Fi is always number one, Dan says. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'm a little that's I'm a, a little hesitant when it comes to outdoor lighting and products that go beyond. You know, it's harder to have those good signals the further you get from your house. So when we're talking Wi-Fi, I think that's why the um, uh, what is it the the uh, Philips Hue the Philips Hue lights you know are probably so work so well outdoors because they don't you know they're not relying on Wi-Fi. They're using that Zigbee connection. Uh, let's see, what else do I have outdoors? Do I have anything else outdoors? I do have some Govi lights outside, but they're, the connection is in the garage, so that's really not that far. Yeah, I don't know, worth a shot, we'll see. Uh, we have, oh cool, Chuck, awesome. Chuck is here and Chuck is using his member chat has been a member for 14 months so thank you so much chuck for being a continued member and uh, supporting this channel says received and installed the akara u100 that i sent great product and easy install except those last two screws awesome so glad so chuck won a giveaway that we did recently and uh yeah got the akara u100 uh, received and all installed. So that's great to hear. I actually just installed one of those at my son's apartment. So that was really cool too. Yeah. Um, love the codes. He really loves the fingerprint. I don't even know that he cares that it's connected, but um, can use the fingerprint, which is really nice. And of course have codes and the NFC tags are really great. So um, yeah, I was surprised actually that an apartment would allow you to replace the lock in the first place, but they did. So really, really cool getting some use out of the Akari U100. It's a great, great little lock there. Uh, let's see here. Yes, thank you, Frederick. Um, I see some questions starting to roll in, so I will do my best to get to as many questions as I can. If you do preface your question or your comment with the actual word question, uh, YouTube will kind of highlight it for me and I can kind of see those a little bit easier. Uh, so don't abuse the power, but if you do have a legit question that you wanna ask me, if you type the word question there, it'll be highlighted for me and uh, I will try to address those at least the best I can as we move through today's stream. Also, uh, speaking of members though, I did wanna to mention today, I see we do have a lot of members in the chat. If you didn't know, today is the first Wednesday of the month and on the first Wednesday of every month, we do our members video chat over on Discord. So if you are a channel member and you would love to, and you would like to hang out uh, after today's stream, so we do that about 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, excuse me, about 30 minutes after the, this stream ends, we'll do our live video chat over there in Discord and always a lot of fun. Would love to see you members over there um, if, you're, if you're free, excuse me. Uh, so let's see, oh, before we jump into questions, I did wanna to mention to you one last thing. Uh, we had one member, I'm not sure if Brad is here in the chat, I'm not sure if I saw him, but I think it was Brad that asked for asked about some codes and stuff for the nano leaf light. So I just did a review recently and was able to get a code, a discount code for nano leaf, the nano leaf store. So I put that down in the description of this live stream. So nano leaf makes those we were just talking about. They make the nano leaf skylight, which is the new product that I just did a review video on this past Sunday. So check out that video if you haven't already, but uh, this discount code should work for, I think anything on the Nanoleaf store, 10% off. That's an exclusive code that they gave me. So I'm gonna try to like bring you guys discount codes whenever I can get them um, from these different brands and stuff just to help you save money. And I'll try my best to let you know about those in these live streams and I'll put those down in the description of the live streams. Uh, again, just trying to save you some money and whenever I can get those and help you guys out, I'll try to do that. So there's the Nanoleaf discount code that I got. There should also be one that I just got for Eve, which I think is also 10% off. You guys can check the description and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's also 10% off discount code down there uh, for the Eve store. And then let's see, oh, there's also a 10% for the Tailwind garage door opener that I have. So I put links and the discount codes to all those down below in the video description. Again, those are exclusive discount codes that I was able to get 
and I want to share with you guys. So uh, check those out if and when you are ready to purchase any of those products and save yourself a little bit of money. Okay, so let's jump into these questions here. Um, question, what do you recommend for a outdoor home kit light, uh, Harold? There's not a lot of options, really. Um, if you want a camera, I, one of my favorite products for this um, application would be the Eve Outdoor Floodlight Camera. Let me see if I can pull up. Uh, Amazon real quick. So this product right here, also Natatmo makes one very similar to this. Uh, again, this is gonna be a camera, but it's a floodlight and a camera, so you kind of get both there. Um, if you could use a camera in that spot, that's a good product. I'm trying to think of any just floodlight products that support HomeKit without a camera. I can't think of any. Um, Philips Hue may have something. I have, let's see, one Philips Hue. Yeah, I have one Philips Hue outdoor lighting fixture, but it's not a floodlight. It's just kind of like an outdoor lamp uh, fixture type of thing. Uh, let's see. And then I actually bought, let's see, I bought two more Philips Hue outdoor lights lighting fixtures for my back porch. If you've been following me on Instagram, you've probably seen some of that back porch project I've been working on. That's what I was talking about earlier. Um, and I had to return those because uh, my intent was to put them on either side of the screen door. There just wasn't enough room to mount what I wanted to mount there. So i um, not using those, but yeah, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that supports, you know, that's just a floodlight. I don't know if anybody else has uh, some in the chat and I saw, let's see, where was the question? Brian, ah, Brian says, with those LifeX products, can all of those be plugged into a standard outlet? Wasn't clear on a few of them. I think so, Brian. I didn't look too hard at them, to be honest with you. Um, but let me pull them up real quick and see if we can find out. So let's use, let's use the pathway lights. So if these are anything like, these are anything like the ones from Philips Hue, what you're gonna get is uh, one that will plug into a standard outlet. Let's see. Designed for installation with low voltage garden systems via easy to connect lamp. So yeah, it's not that clear, but usually the way this is gonna work is the low voltage system, you'll, is, you'll be able to add additional like add-on units. You know, you plug in the first one to the outlet and then you can add on this, the additional ones. You just have to make sure, uh, that's why you have to use this calculator to make sure um, you know, you have the enough output and everything for what you're using. So easy setup. I imagine that's how this works. I don't know. I might head over to Home Depot here soon and pick some up and try them out. Uh, William says, question, did you get a chance to see the new updates in iOS 17.4 for CarPlay? I didn't, uh, William, what, what's new with CarPlay? Let me know. I'll see if I can pull something up. Maybe we can find something real quick. So some of you guys know I'm new to CarPlay, um, iOS 17.4. Uh, Apple's new. Oh, is that? Oh, okay. The, yeah, the instrument cluster. Is that what you're talking about? Um, William. Oh, thank you. I see uh, real quick, Brian or um, yeah, Brian Frederick says you plug in the transformer into an outlet and then bury the low voltage wire in the ground. Each pathway light has a connector that clips to the underground cable. Yeah, so like the that's like the Philips Hue one. Yeah, so you'll plug in the transformer uh, into the into your regular outlet. So perfect. Thank you, Frederick. 
Um, so yeah, back to 17.4 and CarPlay. Uh, I guess William is referring to uh, the instrument cluster. So this isn't something that's gonna affect most regular folks <laughs> like me. Um, but yeah, this is something, when did they first debut this? Gosh, it was like, was that? 2022 or 23 i can't remember when they first showed this off uh but yeah i did see this it's only going to be available what in like one certain type of car i think i mean it looks pretty awesome shots from their polestar 2 after updating Seventeen point four. there we go that does look pretty sweet. I mean, yeah, but most of us aren't gonna have anything like that for a while, unless you have a specific, very very few models probably. probably kind of like the uh, home, or not home key, uh, what is it called? The car key, you know, where you're gonna, it's like home key for your car. I, I still like that. Debuted in 2022. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's been, it's been a while, and they said they were gonna release something by 2024 so i think they were like all right we got to put something out there yeah that sounds about right um modern day tech what's going on modern day what's going on eric i can call you eric huh <laughs> good to see you here hope you're having a good week so far oh really eric says with the new lifex outdoor you have to provide your own power supply and wire Really? It doesn't come with the power supply, huh? That's that's kind of surprising. Yeah, I'll have to um I'll have to look into that. Like I said, I might go pick up pick up some and see if we can get them to work. All right. Roll back up to a couple of questions that I missed and I will go back and forth. If you post a question, um, I will come back and get to it. So um, Mark says, did Nanoleaf announce new outdoor lights at CES? No. Uh, yeah, they did. They did actually. So I almost said no because Nanoleaf actually didn't have a big presence at CES this year. They, um, they just did kind of like a, it kind of had like a little private, uh, demo space, but they didn't have a big booth like they did in the past. And yeah, they had the outdoor string lights, I think was the big one. Uh, was there anything else that they, I know, um, let's see, Eric is in, if Eric's still in the chat, Eric might can remind us if what all they announced. I think it was just the outdoor string lights, which should be coming pretty soon. I thought about installing, using something like these for, what, how do you guys feel? Does anybody here use any smart outdoor string lights? I'm curious, like, you know, the, you know, string lights that you would hang over a patio, over a deck or something like that. I'm gonna see if I can find, I, I don't think they have theirs posted yet. Um, but anyways, hanging string lights is definitely something that I wanted to do on my back patio, that's one of the things I've started preparing for. But I didn't really, I don't know how I feel about hanging just like smart string lights. One of my friends installed some, yeah, Twinkly. Twinkly has some, uh, what do they call theirs? Uh, the Festoon maybe, I think that's Twinkly. But uh, I don't know, I have a friend who installed some. I think I think his were Govi, the Govi outdoor string lights. And I, that's one of the few products I haven't used from Govi. But he wasn't crazy about them because they're kind of like plastic looking and they just don't look as nice as like the traditional like Edison type of bulbs outdoors, I guess. So I don't know. I feel like a lot of the smart ones kind of have that more plastic kind of look. They change colors and all that stuff, but I feel like I just really wouldn't use the colors that much out there anyways. And so what I had in the backyard for the longest time until we did this whole remodel was just some regular old dumb string lights plugged into a smart outlet. Um, the e, uh, no, the Lutron Caseta smart outlet. Then I can still control it with HomeKit. And um, I like, I, I don't know, I just kind of like the look of the traditional, you know, the traditional bulbs 
that you can hang out there. So that's kind of what I was thinking about doing, but I might give I might give the um, the Nano Leaf ones a try. They I don't know. How, I'll have to see them in person, I guess, to, to see um, what I think about them. Uh, Eric says, outdoor string lights and permanent lights. Oh, that's right, that was the other one. Thank you, Eric. They did also announce the permanent outdoor lights. Um, forgot about that. It was just a tease. Oh, okay, thank you. So it was just a tease to see if there was interest. Okay. Uh, well, I haven't heard anything about the permanent outdoor lights since, but I think we'll see something from the string lights in the near future. I think I can say that. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I just use dumb string lights with a Lutron outdoor outlet. Exactly. That's what I've done for the longest time, and it has served me well. Um, and they just, they look so good, you know? I just, I was kind of like, very similar to what I did in my kitchen. So I put... Um, in a way, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about, but I put uh, strip lights under and above my cabinets, and I was like, I'm gonna get some that can change colors and do effects and all this cool stuff, you know? So I'll be able to do, I never use that, except for maybe like two days around Christmas time, I'll change it like red and green. Other than that, it's just like warm white and cool white all the time, and I feel like outdoor string lights is kind of the same thing, I don't know. Um, Jeff, question, will you announce, oh, okay, Jeff, thank you. Sure, we'll, and I will try to mention this as well at the end. Uh, Jeff says, if you join the member chat in Discord, do it via, um, if you're doing it from your computer, don't do it from the web, the web app, do it from the Discord app. So yeah, we've had some issues, I guess, when you're trying to join a video chat in Discord through the, through the website, through the Discord website. It's just there's some issue, connection issues that can arise. So you'll have probably much better luck, and I experienced this as well, um, using the actual Discord app on your computer. At least that goes with Mac computers. Um, that's what I'm using. I'm not 100% sure if that applies also to Windows, but if you're using a computer, I would recommend definitely using the Discord app uh, just for those live, um, those video chats, if nothing else. So yeah, thank you, Jeff. I'll try to mention that again as well uh, towards the end of the stream. Oh, okay, Jeff says, same on Windows. Okay, yeah, so use the Discord app for those, uh, for those video chats if you're if you're joining from a computer awesome yeah and look forward to that so uh again members at uh five about 30 minutes after this stream ends we'll do that over on discord so hope to see you guys there um devo the drummer boy says in y'all's opinion what is better home assistant or home kit i'm gonna go ahead and just let y'all sit with that one discussed among yourselves in the chat um it's I know there's probably some mixed feelings about that. Personally, I haven't used Home Assistant yet. I know it's very powerful. Um, HomeKit's gonna be a lot easier of an interface and probably a lot easier to get started. Home Assistant's gonna be more powerful on the back end, I think, in general. But um, yeah, you guys can discuss <laughs> in the chat. I think, I'm pretty sure we've got some Home Assistant uh, folks here in the, uh, in the chat. Oh, Paul. Gifted some memberships. Paul, thank you so much. We got to hit the confetti for that. Thank you so much, Paul, for gifting five memberships. So as new members, if you got one of these, uh, YouTube will randomly choose who these go to that Paul just gifted. Let me see, will it let me highlight that? Yes, it will, awesome. Um, so thank you again, Paul, Lawrence, Bob, Michael, Cornelius, uh, Fordo, Ark, all were gifted memberships. So again, as a member, you have access to our member Discord server. You can have access to those uh, monthly video chats. Like I said, we're having one today. So if you get over into our Discord soon enough, you can join us this evening. We'd love to see you there. Um, also, I do, sometimes I'll do some member-only videos. You get at early access to new videos most of the time. Um, uh, I try to do that as well. So yeah, some other perks you can get there as a member. 
So very cool of you, Paul. Thank you for doing that. Uh, I gauge it. What's going on, I gauge it? How you doing? I hear this fairly often from people who do use Home Assistant. Um, and he says, I use Home Assistant on the back end for automations and HomeKit on the front end for the UI. Again, I hear this fairly often from people who use Home Assistant. So you can use both. Um, and it does seem like people like doing this um, pretty regularly. I, like I said, I hear this quite a bit. So All right, and let's see, Ignacio says, HomeKit all the way, <laughs> Paige. I feel you on this page, that's kinda how I feel. That is really why I haven't jumped into it myself. I'm telling you, like some of the folks in our Discord server know that like I've been, we actually have a Home Assistant channel on our Discord server. And uh, because I, you know, I know people that like to use it. And so I've been actually in there recently and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm thinking about doing it. I want to do it this way. What do you, th you know, kind of going back and forth. And then every time I do that and I build myself up to do it and, and to set it up, I look around at all the other things I have to do that week or that day or whatever. And I'm just like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> it's going to, I just have a feeling it's going to be a time suck as soon as I start. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's just what I've heard. And that's the feeling I get, but I will jump into it and give it a shot at some point. I promise. Uh, I just want to see a little bit what it, what it's all about, you know. Uh, but I have been using uh, Homey Pro. That's another thing too that I've been doing. I've been able to use Homey Pro for some really, you know, powerful automations. The automation engine on that is really amazing. I absolutely love using it. It's very intuitive as well as very powerful. I think they have just somehow found a way to really. Uh, join those two things together, which is really hard to do, I think, have something that powerful and that intuitive at the same time. But they've really done a great job with that. So, um, you know, also able to use that. And Paul, see, I, I can't really answer that until I use Home Assistant. I don't know if anybody here has used Homey Pro and Home Assistant. I do think that Homey Pro is as powerful Again, this is just coming from somebody who, you know, on the outskirts a little bit. I think it is the the issue you may you may run into with Homey Pro versus Home Assistant is that Homey Pro doesn't have you know you might not have as many integrations as you have with Home Assistant. Home Assistant you could probably integrate just about anything. Homey Pro you will probably run into some roadblocks there just with integrations if you have like a ton of existing products. But as far as what you can do. The stuff that I've seen and been able to do with Homey Pro, it's, um, it's pretty impressive. Those advanced flows is what Homey Pro calls it. All right, I'm gonna scroll back up. I saw some questions that I missed. Thank you guys for being patient. If you asked a question, I will try to get to them all. Um, like I said, uh, Frederick says, are you looking forward to the Apple event next week? Sounds like a lot of updates coming to iPads. I am. I mean, I'm always excited about an Apple event for sure. Uh, that said, I'm not, you know, super duper excited, I guess, because I don't really have any intent to buy a new iPad um, or even a MacBook or anything like that. Um, right now. So personally, selfish reasons, I guess it doesn't really, I don't get that excited about this one, but you know, um, there's always a level ex of excitement with the new Apple event for sure. Um, you know, we'll see, would love to see them talk about Vision Pro or maybe some app development and stuff that's, you know, on that. And I don't know if they, they'll probably save a lot of that for WWDC, but um, yeah, you know, always just excited to see what they, what they're bringing out and, and new announcements and stuff for sure. Uh, Devil the Drummer Boy question. I'm thinking about getting an Android. Is it possible to use HomeKit or is it a back way to do it? Oh man, don't don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, sort of. <laughs> no, I you can't use HomeKit on an Android. Um, yeah, you just you just really can't do it. I mean, you may be able to find some kind of like hacky workaround or something, but uh, you know, you need you really just need Apple devices to use Apple Home. Um, you know, kind of the way it's intended to be used. Uh, 
<sighs> All right. Um, Conference of Birds says, you have subscribers like myself from the Middle East, specifically from Kingdom of Bahrain, you rock home kit. Question, any advice on the Akara S1 screen switch? I don't have any advice on it because I have not used it. Let's see if we can pull it up just for those who may not know of this. Let's see, where's a good website? AliExpress, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so just so those know what we're talking about here, Akara makes these, um, I'm, on, I'm on AliExpress right now, uh, makes these like in-wall screen panels. I mean, they look really great, all I can go off of is just, you know, how they look. They look awesome. I try not to use products that are um, not like rated or made for my region just to eliminate issues, especially products like this that you need to install like to electricity inside your wall and stuff like that. So um, I don't intend to use any of these and I don't think a car is going to bring anything like this to the international market either. That said, a car makes fantastic stuff. I would assume that they're pretty awesome and, and great to use. But uh, again, I haven't used any myself, so can't really say for sure. Um, and, and that's why, you know, I know some of you may have access to certain products that aren't available here and, and maybe vice versa. But um, I just, you know, Again, I, I try to stick to products that are available and kind of intended for my region at least, or internationally. You know, there's a lot of products that are sold internationally. Those are the best because I know everybody else can, can get to those too. So that's really what I try to stick with and use. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Jeff, thank you. Um, referring to the Akara switches and why they're not available here. Akara actually sells a lot, a, whole, a number of products that are not available um, outside of just the Chinese market. Um, and, and that's why I was just saw recently, I think it was HomeKit News posted another, uh, an update, some, what was it? It may have been some type of switch like that. I'll, I'll see if I can pull it up. Uh, he reports on stuff from all over the place. Oh yeah, the new, new wall hub and smart outlet announced for the Chinese market. So this is another product. Is this, yeah, this is a Cara also. Um, so they have a lot of these types of products that come out and even light, they've had lighting products for a long time. Uh, that weren't available internationally. And so I just, when I see these products that are available in that market, I just, you know, kind of take it with a grain of salt because I know that they're probably not going to be released internationally. So, Lurk Jerk, what's going on? How are you doing here? Good to see you. Better late than never. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we got some more questions I saw up here. I'm going to go back. And like I said, if you have a question, um, preface it with the word question. That, that will help it stick out to me, and YouTube will highlight it for me a little bit. Oh, thank you. I saw, um, sorry, I saw your, I see your um, comment there, Mark. I'll get to that in a second. Edgar's Home Tech says, question, are you having a lot of no response from the skylight? Saw on Reddit that people are having a lot of that. Um, well, not a lot. Edgar, but if you, I did release a video, a review of this product, uh, was it this past Sunday? And I did mention this, so I discussed all the pros and the cons, and as always was a thousand percent honest regarding my experience with them. And uh, yeah, I, one of the things I said in that video is that they have gone unresponsive on me a couple of times. So it has happened. It doesn't happen a lot. It hasn't happened lately 
Let me see, I'll pull it up right now. We'll check in live time to see how they're looking. And um, yeah, they're good to go right now. So if I pull them all the way up, you can see you just got a lot brighter in here. <laughs> so they are working and responsive right now. But like I said, they have gone unresponsive, but they haven't in, I don't know, probably like at least a few days or a week. So uh, yeah, take it for, for what it is there, I guess. Like I think what I, one thing I said in that video is that these things are way too expensive to be going unresponsive. So I hope that that's something that they fix through firmware updates, or maybe it was just a fluke in my case, who knows, um, you know, a lot of factors that can go into that type of thing. But um, yeah, hopefully that's not something we see a lot of. Um, and Mark post, thank you, Mark, for the uh, member chat. Mem uh, Mark has been a member for 10 months. Thank you, Mark. Is the Acara Smart Switch Wall Socket H to the device you thought they were shipping globally? It's on HomeKit News today. Um, is this the HS2? I don't even know what this is called. No, this is the Smart Gateway. Oh, uh, the H2. No, I don't think that, I don't know, maybe misunderstood something there. Uh, I don't think they're shipping any I don't think they're shipping anything new globally. Not that I am aware of. Uh, Paige says, is anyone using anything for a pool thermometer in HomeKit? Good question there from Paige. I don't have a pool, so it's not something I've done, but I have heard, I'm trying to think if anybody, I think some people, I think there's some solutions that you could probably use, you know, Homebridge for to get around. Um, trying to think of anything that you might be able to use for that in a, for in a pool. Huh, I'm not sure. Uh-oh, Caroline's here in the chat. Have I missed some um, comments here from Caroline? Might come crash the member chat later. Oh boy. <laughs> Paul, awesome, Paul. Thank you so much. Another Paul gifted. Wow, what are the odds? That's awesome. We have another Paul, Paul Fava. Fava, Fava, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your, your uh, last name there. But thank you so much, Paul, for gifting five memberships. We got uh, Tobias, Keenan, Pascal, uh, let's see, Dale, and Juan were all gifted. A membership today thanks to Paul again those are randomly kind of distributed through um, through YouTube so uh, but very nice of you thank you Paul and again as a channel member if you guys are getting one of these gifted memberships or you want to join there's also a join button somewhere down there um, below that um, will give you access to some perks like our members only discord server we've talked about here today um, some behind the scenes, early access to new videos and things like that. So um, yeah, definitely check that, check out those perks if you are a member. The Discord's awesome. Would love to see you guys over in the Discord uh, if you are a new member. Uh, William says, it's kind of funny you were actually say this because I was looking at the new, on the news and saw a car came out with a camera doorbell but won't be available for us. Speaking of, what are the odds too? Did you hear that? My HomePod it just- looks like Kobe It looks like Kobe is at the like door. <laughs> right when we discussed the doorbells, that's crazy, right? <laughs> um, Akara has the uh, G4 video doorbell already. I'm not sure if there was another one that was um, available you know, somewhere outside of the global market. Um, or not available to the global market, but we do have the Acara G4 doorbell camera that is available now. Dan, when will the Acara M3 hub release? They said Q2, if I recall correctly, so hopefully soon. Q2, that should is what they were what we were told for that. Uh, let me see. 
I'm gonna go back to some of these questions up here, guys. Um, Stannis Handy says, will you be testing the Akara U200? Apparently they are working on implementing home key in the whole world instead of just the US. Oh, interesting. Is Maybe that's what's taken so long on that. I hadn't thought of that, very interesting. Uh, yeah, so they are, uh, we talked about this some in last week's live stream. Um, this Akara U200, they've got a live Kickstarter going on. They've like surpassed their goal by like a billion <laughs> or something. I mean, they've way surpassed their, their goal. Uh, let's see, oops, sorry, wrong button there. This is the Akara U200. So this is a retrofit lock and it will support, um, so it has a fingerprint scanner, keypad, uh, like a little separate attachment, really nice looking product. Reminds me of the SwitchBot lock because it's a retrofit, de retrofit design. It will support matter over thread, which is great. Um, and uh, they keep saying, where is it on here? Here we go. Uh, we'll soon add support for Apple Home Keys. So I hadn't thought about it being available um, in the EU, and maybe that's what's maybe that has something to do with that holdup. So they keep saying like certification pending for Home Key support, but they do intend this to have Home Key support. And uh, I think I'm trying to remember if they demo. No, I was thinking of the other lock. They have another lock that's coming out this year. Um, they showed off at CES, but. But yeah, this should support home key once they get that certification, hopefully that goes through. So yeah, I would love to test this lock out as well because I think a lot of people would be interested in this lock. Um, it will fit European cylinder locks as well as North American locks. So it should have a lot of uh, versatility there in that product. Um, the pre-orders, Ignacio, I'm not sure. So you can, um, you can sign up to back this project right now on Kickstarter. So just, um, you can just search for a Cara and, um, U200 and you can find this Kickstarter or I can drop a, I'll drop the link in the chat if you guys are interested. I think you can still back this. Um, and they've got different, like, options available let's see where's the pricing again we talked about this last week a little bit so sorry if we're repeating ourselves here there you go super early bird early bird i'm not sure where they're at right now on the pricing um, but that's kind of what you're looking at looks like pricing is a bit high i feel like if it's 250 for the final product although it does pack a lot of features so um, i guess in that regard it's not too bad but Oh, Brian says backing for from the U200 ran out. You can't back it anymore. There's no reward options available. Okay, thank you, Brian, for sharing that. I I saw that the button was lit up there, so I thought you could still back it, but I did not know. Okay, yeah, I guess you're right. Yep, I'm seeing that now. Okay, like I said, they, they really surpassed their goal there um, on Kickstarter. Oh, it ran out the first day. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I know they just, I don't really even know why they did the Kickstarter. I guess there's a reason for it, but I, I'm not crazy about it when these established companies do Kickstarter campaigns. To me, it's just, I don't know. But yeah, look at the uh, $317,000 pledged of their $10,000 goal. So, they met their goal. <laughs> uh, Paul, um, Hoobs Pro has not been, so I, I feel like they released like maybe the first batch, but they were having some production issues. We talked about this a little while ago, maybe a month or so ago uh, on the live stream a little bit. They were having some production issues, had something to do with the chipset, I think, in the product um, and uh, their supplier, they released an official statement a while, little while ago about that. And they're kind of, they had to kind of like go back to square one in the development of it. Something along those lines, long story short, their production was delayed. So I don't have one yet. They're not shipping them out. Let's, let's pull it up. I'll just pull it up real quick. Um, 
for those that maybe don't even know what we're talking about. Let me see if I can, is it hoops? Yeah, hoops.com, okay. So Hoops Pro, here we go once again, pre-order, first batch sold out. Okay, so the first batch was delivered. So has any does anybody have this? Is If anybody has, has one delivered and is using it, reach out, let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear. Uh, I don't think I've talked to anybody who has actually received one of these, but it looks like the first batch was delivered, second batch sold out and is in production. So that's where they got hold up, held up from my understanding with their production. Again, there was a whole like um, email message that they sent out at one point about this, but um, it's kind of like a all protocol matter hub, sort of like a Hoops Pro type of device. I think it's a comparable product to Hoops Pro. Uh, sorry, Homey Pro. I get, they're so similar. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at on that one. Dan says, I would just run Hoobs on my Docker server, but I already use Homebridge. Yeah. Ooh, did you guys hear that? We just had some thunder basically shake the whole house. Uh, yeah, that's right, Brian. Uh, Exactly. Good Good point there. No Z-Wave on the Ho Hoops Pro. So that's one of the biggest differences that I see from Hoops Pro and Homey Pro. Homey Pro does have a Z-Wave radio on it. Uh, so you can connect Z-Wave devices directly to Homey Pro. You cannot do that with Homey Pro. There's no Z-Wave on there, which some people care about, some people don't. Um, but if you do like Z-Wave, then uh, yeah, Homey would be the one and not hoops for you probably. All right, I saw some more questions up here. Uh, question, is the current homie better than the early one? I can't answer that, Anna, because I have not used, I only recently started using homie. I never used the previous one. Uh, it wasn't until the 2023 model of the, yeah, 2023 version of homie pro that they really started shipping outside of the European um, region. So their stuff wasn't really available in the US and in other areas until recently. So that's when I got a hold of it now that they're kind of shipping internationally. Uh, so I can't really answer this one personally. Question, any issues with Ikara U100 home key? I can only get it to work on one phone, not the other three in my house. Brian, I have not had any issues with mine. Um, I don't use my Ikara U100 very regularly um, as far as like the main access point. So I have my U100 on a secondary door. I don't. It's a door that most people in my house, probably, I might be the only one that actually uses it. Um, but I have not had any issues. If, if the home key itself is what's the issue, it might be a home kit issue or something along those lines. So as long as the people have access to the lock in home kit in their home app, you know, you've invited them to your home and they can access the lock through your home in the Apple home app, they should be able to use home key uh, for any of your home key locks. Um, Austin, what's going on, Austin? Austin says, any ideas for our car, a car vibration sensors? I had some on Windows for brake sensors, but even on low wind wouldn't trigger them. Looking to repurpose them now. So they wouldn't work for brake sensors? Hmm, I would imagine if a window broke that that would trigger them. If you're having trouble with them not being triggered uh, or not working, then I don't, you might have, I don't know how, how you would be able to use them anywhere else, but yeah, let's see what's some clever stuff I've done with them. I've used them on, I mean, you can use them on like washers and dryers. That's a little tricky though, because washer and dryer cycles will often start and then stop. So that's, you know, all in one cycle. It's hard to automate those. I've used them on doors. You can even use them on, um, 
like, uh, let's see, uh, one cool thing, you could put one under a table and do like a little knock um, or a drawer for like opening and closing drawers, maybe if a contact sensor wouldn't work. So yeah, you can, there's probably a ton of creative things you can do with those. Um, but yeah, I did one a while back in automation where I put one under my mantle and I knocked on it and, um, you know, it would trigger some lights or something like that. Oh, Dan, thank you. I was wondering that. It says, I think that he was saying they were too sensitive. I thought he said even the wind wouldn't trigger them. I thought that's what I read. So maybe I misread that. Um, but if that's the case, you can adjust the sensitivity too. Maybe you've already tried that. Um, in the Akara app, you can adjust the sensitivity on those. So definitely try that, you know, bump it up um, to be less sensitive uh, if you haven't tried that. So but that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> thank you, Dan. Um, good question. Anna says, which Flick Hub do you recommend? The Flick Hub Mini or the original one? So let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Flick dot, what's, the, what's their website? Dot IO, I think. Um, I think they have a good comparison on their site if I recall correctly. Yeah, here we go. So the, the Flick Hub, so for those that don't know here, I sh guess I should preference that, give me a reason to use my overhead camera. The Flick makes these little buttons. They're usually white, but I have some of these black special edition ones right here. Uh, so they make these little smart buttons you can kind of stick anywhere, but you need a hub for them if you weren't familiar with Flick already. Uh, so Flick, so they have these two hubs. This is their newer hub. This one's a little more affordable, but you can see the differences here. Um, probably don't need the SDK. Um, Wi-Fi frequency, if you're using it for, with Wi-Fi, you can connect to the five gigahertz um, band on the LR hub. Uh, but this right here is a big one. So if you wanna use them with HomeKit, you need the Flick Hub LR for sure. So the smaller hub, that's probably, I guess, one of the ways they were able to cut costs on this one. This one's a little more affordable. Uh, that one doesn't support HomeKit. The Flick Hub LR does. And another big point here is this. So this is actually why, HomeKit aside, this is one of the reasons why I like uh, the LR, because I can connect it directly to my uh, network switch or directly to my router. Uh, with the ethernet port so that's just going to give you you know more reliability uh, so that's the one i would go with just because of those two reasons the ethernet and home kit support but again it may depend on um kind of what uh what you're looking for there oh and bob is trolling says what smart button do you recommend with matter support there's really only one smart button i think with matter support that doesn't require any type of hub. And that is, oh, <laughs> wrong button. I always do that. That is this one. Again, here, I don't have any of the white buttons at my desk. I've got, this is also, um, this is the, uh, it is pouring down rain outside, <laughs> by the way, right now. Uh, but this is the 2.0 button and this supports matter over thread. It's not perfect, but it's it works. Sometimes it goes unresponsive on me lately. It's been doing that, but overall uh, it's good. And this is the only one that I know of that supports matter over thread. So you asked about um, matter support. The Akara buttons might through their hub. So you might be able to get some matter support from different things through a hub like that if, you, if you're okay with matter over a hub. Um, you can look at the Akara ones would probably work. And let's see, what else might, you might be able to, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that might would work with Matter. Yeah, that's the only one I'd be comfortable saying for sure would probably work. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can hear it, huh? Yeah, it's definitely raining here. It was raining really hard a second ago. Uh, 
All right, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions. I saw some up top, so I appreciate your patience. If you guys posted a question earlier and if I did not answer, uh, I'm sorry, I will try my best to get to as many as I can uh, next week. And also, if you're a member, just ask me in Discord or tag me in our Discord server and I'm, I'll definitely respond over there. Travis says, do you happen to see a car a tweet that leaked? If so, some cool stuff, including wired outdoor cameras. I did see that, Travis. Um, it's just like a whole bunch of products that were supposedly coming from a car. I saw that uh, as, I can't remember if it was like a rumor or what the source was on that. So I didn't, I didn't pay too much attention to it. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Until I see so stuff that's a little more concrete, I, you know, I take a lot of that stuff with a grain of salt. Um, I would be pretty surprised to see a wired outdoor camera. Like when I think of wired cameras, I think of POE and I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what they meant. I don't think we'll see an Acara POE camera. Um, maybe wired just meant like not battery powered and something that you have to plug in. I don't know, but yeah, that was like a rumor kind of thing, but I did see that. So thank you for bringing that up. Interesting and excited to see, you know, a car is just all, it seems like a car has just been innovating and just pumping out new products left and right for, for, for a while now, but especially over the past year or so, they've just, they've been killing it really, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, let's see. All right. One more, uh, da -da -da. question tailwind notification to play through HomePod. Um, Dwayne, I'm not really sure what you mean there. Uh, notifications. So smart home notifications don't generally play through your HomePod. Uh, only doorbells will chime through your HomePod. So I guess that would be a no. Yeah, I think that would be a no. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that helped. Hopefully I answered your question. Um, and with that said, guys, we are going to wrap it up because we do have our member chat coming up here in a little bit. Um, for all the channel members, again, that's on Discord. Once again, if you join us from your computer, use the Discord app because it's going to be a lot more smooth that way than using the Discord website um, on your computer. Again, we got some new members today, so thank you for everybody who gifted those uh, both Pauls for gifting some new memberships to uh, to some folks out there. Much appreciated, and I appreciate you guys all for hanging out and joining me today. We'll have a new video coming later this week, so turn on notifications on the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss that, and we'll be back next week with another live stream. Um, yeah, I think that's all we have today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I enjoyed it as always. Have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week, and we will see you next time. God bless.